So this is a follow-up to last month's video where I was showing you some hardware where I was trying to train these dogs to bark a little less. Uh, this video I'm going to show you a little bit more about the software. But uh, first I'm going to show you a couple of examples um, of noise detection in action. Uh, we'll start with one of these dogs. Bark 2. Dog three. C5 car 68. Garage door just opened. Bark three. GC5 toy vehicle 81. Dog three. So that was the original goal, was to detect barking, respond with an annoying ultrasonic sound, and maybe discourage barking. Since we had this hardware all set up, I expanded it to detect some other sounds. For example, uh, we can now detect a sneezing, both a his and a her sneeze, so that we can better track what we're allergic to, a seasonal allergy or whatever. Uh, here's an example of that. Sneeze B2. <coughs> sneeze B2. So the house said sneeze B2. Uh, sneeze for sneeze, B for Bruce, and two for microphone number two over there. So a couple other health related noises I trained it to detect would be uh, coughing. Uh, I'm going to simulate it here by playing back um, some coughs that we had recorded earlier. Four. Cough two. Now there it said cough four and cough two. It means both the uh, microphone two here and the microphone four in the other room detected it. So the other noise that we can detect is, um, you know how when you get phlegm in your lungs and you want to clear it out? It's called throat clearing. Uh, play back of that. Throat two. Uh, so we have one other noise we can detect, which I'm not going to play back. It's snoring. I think I've already embarrassed myself enough. Uh, but let me show you here uh, how that noise detector is working. On this Raspberry Pi here, you can see the errata. And I'm going to tap the microphone here to just make noise. And you can see here what happened is it detected another clip, uh, but it didn't respond with any recognition because tapping on a microphone is not that interesting. Um, now we'll switch over here to the computer and I'll show you uh, the code that drives that. So the detector has two parts. The audio recorder running on the Raspberry Pi I just showed you and then a server. So the recorder uses a program called SOX, S-O-X. It's the sound exchange program, the Swiss Army knife of audio manipulation. This is a Python script I have. Uh, it's just a shell around the SOX program so that I can call it with different for different sound cards for different Raspberry Pis. The magic is down here where we call the REC program with these PARMs. This will do a continuous recording but ignore silence. So only when it detects sound of above a certain threshold, do a recording two seconds and save the file restarts listening for a new file. You can see here is an example of uh, various noise files and the R4 versus R3 versus R2 are the different Raspberry Pis that I have. So the second part of the setup is uh, another Python script called noise server. This calls a library called FastAI, which is an implementation of a neural network for um, machine learning. What I trained it for a couple thousand clips that I had gathered over a few months to distinguish various sounds from each other. It starts here with the section of the code that looks at that directory for noise files. If the file's changed, it looks for when there's a file created event. When it sees that, it runs this classify routine. 
this routine, this is the somewhat clever step, I, I thought. <laughs> what we do is we convert the wave file to a spectrogram. So what a spectrogram file is, time on the x-axis and frequency on the y-axis. And then the color indicates the intensity. So uh, here we have a couple of examples of, uh, say, a cough versus a bark. You can see the cough has a two-second clip. Uh, it's like a two-part cough with a pretty wide spectrum, whereas the bark is, is narrower. So this wave to spec file creates the spectrograms based on the wave file. And then we open up the image, that spectrogram image, and then this is the step where we call the fast AI uh, predict model. And it comes back with what it thinks the type of noise is. So the data then gets pushed out to MQTT, which allows us to share data between different programs and different boxes. We can observe that MQTT uh, data using a program like TT Explorer. And here you can see the last noise that went through was a uh, type of other. So it was uh, noise other than the ones we're interested in. So now this uh, gets picked up by node red. And this node here is looking for that noise. Then based on the type of noise, we will, whether it's bark, other, or snore, we will send it off to do different things. For example, here's the bark one. If I simulate an uh, incoming bark thing with this, button. Bark two. Bark two. And if I click it enough times, we will exceed the Stop limit three. and we'll get this, our ultrasonic noise um, to try to discourage barking. The other thing we do down here is every minute, hour, and daily week, we tally the noise data into, into an influx D, D database. And that allows us to use Grafana then to plot the counts. And then here what we have is the last three months dog barking. For each day you can see we have uh, 100 barks versus 200 barks. If you squint your eyes, this is a logarithmic scale, you might be able to convince yourself that it's getting better. So here for example looks like we're averaging daily barks of 50, whereas back here we're about 100. Uh, that's what I like to tell myself anyway. We can also look at uh, sneezing, and I haven't really detected a, a date-based allergy component to the sneezing yet, but maybe with time we'll be able to see that. I think this video is getting a little bit long, so let's wrap it up from here. There will be a pointer to the code below, and let me know if you want any more details on any of this. Till then, so see you next month.